Today we are working on a 2010 Toyota Prius. We're replacing the throttle body because we got some error codes saying that it is bad. So the first thing you do is you disconnect the 12 volt battery. And once you do that, you can't open the hatch anymore because it's electric. You know, you push that button and electronically it opens it. So leave the back hatch open, note to self. So you've got to unscrew this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt. I've already done that. Helps speed up the process. Take that out of the way. It just connects right down here. And your throttle body is right here. I don't have my long needle nose, so I'll have to get down there and get that clip off right there. Have to squeeze that. But in order to do that, I'm just gonna, I've already loosened this. Pull this up. This just separates. Comes out of here. That comes up. Should just be able to put this to the side. Less things you have to unplug, the better off you are. This has a tab right here. Push that tab, pull up on the wires, yank them out. You do want to check the wires, make sure they're not broken. I had a wire broken on a Gen 1 before, and the mass airflow sensor wouldn't talk to anything because one of the wires was broken. So check those out. If you did want to remove this mass airflow sensor, you just press on this tab and disconnect that. So this cover just pulls off of here, but when you pull it off, check this, this, and this, because these little rubber grommets can get stuck on the, the knobs and you gotta slide them back in here after you pull them off the knobs. So you can put this back on. So let's pull this out of here. Oh, hey, we got another bolt right there. So this hose you have to remove. Three places. And I believe this is the one that I got stuck underneath here because I forgot to reroute it around the air cleaner housing. And that's the one that got between the bottom of here and pressed right down on that and then unhooked that. Yep, that's what happened. So don't let that happen to you. Now we're going to disconnect this. And these are my weekend tools. Just happened to be in this bag in the car on vacation. And now we have access to all four, well, there's two bolts and there are two studs on here. And this does come with the new gasket. Somewhere out there. It's in the bottom of the box. There we go. That's the new gasket. So I've got these bolts disconnected and these nuts. Pull this up. And here's our gasket. Grab this little tab right here. Pull this out. Stick the new one in. And this is what they always talk about. The oil that's in the intake manifold down here. 
Uh, I think that just helps lubricate the motor. But now I'm going to dab that out of there. Yeah, there's a lot of goo in here. That's blow by, baby. Now the new throttle body did come with this seal, so I didn't have to buy this separate. I think the old seal would have worked. I've wiped out the oil that was down in there. And now I'm going to swap these hoses. And there's the purge valve. That costs like 70 bucks. That goes bad. Make sure that stays plugged in. Otherwise, you'll get errors. Got both of these clamps pulled back. So I can do a quick swap from here to the new one. Just in case these are antifreeze hoses. So I have both of my hoses ready to go. And I'm just going to, I've got the intake covered so no water gets in that. And I'm just going to hold this the same direction and unplug and plug in as quickly as possible. Okay, so there was pink antifreeze in them. But I only got a couple drops out of them. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. I think I was more concerned than I should have been. Okay, I've got to put these clamps back on. I'm going to give them a squeeze and walk them back down. That was not lined up. Hello. Hello again. <laughs> Got our gasket on. Gonna line up our stuff. Studs. Yeah, that's relaxed. I'm just going to tighten our bolts and put everything back together. Awesome. Make sure that this stays up here, otherwise, it will unplug that sensor. Now, remember, these are into plastic, so. They're not real tight. They'll break off the plastic intake manifold. And all you're doing is squishing that little rubber grommet. Plug the wire back in. Now this has a little clip that keeps it from coming out. But remember this kind of sits off to the side a little bit. I don't know, something like that. So once you get this one off, you have to Give it a squeeze like this to make it pop back together. Or, well, to retighten it. Make sure it's all set in there right. Yeah, looks good. Again, check that wire. You'll get a different error if that gets unplugged. Make sure this gets up above your air box. That's next. Okay, I got my leaf collection out of here. I'm gonna line these dots up. I know. You don't have to, but that's where they're supposed to go. We'll finger tighten this one. Check your little wire down there. Make sure it's plugged in. Make sure your hose is up here. up there all lined up there get those two screws back in I 
I was doing one video and I had to go back and check my video to make sure I put a bolt in. Yeah. All right, put our air filter back in. We'll get, hopefully we got the right angle, the correct angle on that. Otherwise we'll have to turn it a little bit. My bag's in the way. Tighten this one. I'll plug this in. And we gotta plug in our mass airflow sensor. Come on, goofball. clicked line up with that three clicks put this back in And that white dot with the bracket, put that bolt in, that bolt in, and that bolt in. They're in my car, so I'm going to go get them out. I'll probably try to start it first because I guess I do have to re-fasten this. And again, I didn't take any of these off. Now, every time you disconnect the battery, the first time you go to start it, it will not come up into ready mode. So you do have to take and turn it off and turn it back on the first time again after disconnecting the battery. I'm going to show you the error codes that I was getting. And they were permanent error codes. Now these permanent error codes will erase themselves once the problem is resolved. It says throttle actuator, permanent. So here's throttle actuator control body range performance, throttle actuator control body stuck closed, and throttle actuator control system stuck open. So I I don't know, hey, I just replaced it. So they all say permanent. And now we're gonna start it. So now we're gonna turn it off and turn it back on and now it'll say ready. Hopefully it'll work. And the engine started right up. It would not do that before. It would not start at all. Now, if you want to charge your battery, see how my battery's low. You press your foot on the brake, you put it in drive, and you push your foot on the gas, and the engine should rev up. See how the engine's revving up? And it will charge your battery while you're sitting here in drive with your foot on the brake. You'll see it come up. Yesterday, when, two days ago, when it went bad, I was able to charge my battery to full doing this because the throttle body worked again just momentarily. Now, see, it is charging. So by holding your foot on the brake, putting it in drive, you can charge your battery on, I know a Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 3 Prius. I'm, I'm sure after that you can too, but I know you can with these. So these errors will go away after I drive it three times or so and the problem doesn't 
show up again. If it doesn't show up again, that permanent will go away. That's even on a hybrid battery pack replacement. So I'm just going to put it in park. And fortunately, this problem's, I've had this problem for six months and it was sporadic, but we just kept driving the car and this time when it happened on vacation, after we fixed my son's starter on his Duramac diesel, yeah, um, he towed me back with his truck after we fixed it because my, my car messed up right after we fixed his truck. Yeah, he towed me back to the beach house on vacation. Gotta love it. You guys, I hope this helped you. Have a good day.